Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to this morning's study. Uh, before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? Dear Father in heaven, we come to you this morning thanking you for the blessings of rest that we could have last night. And we are thankful, Lord, for the time that we are in, in spite of the fact that it is an interesting time. We know, Lord, that it is a privileged time. Uh, that we have an opportunity uh, to observe things that angels have longed to look into and that we are nearing the approach of our Savior. And so we are thankful for this light for our feet that reveals your character and your guidance and your care for each one of us. Uh, we pray, Lord, that you can help us as we sort through American history and the sacred history of ancient Israel. And um, as we see how they relate to our present day, we just ask, Lord, that your Holy Spirit can be our teacher and guide. Be with us now, we pray and ask. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> okay. Well, good morning again, everyone. So we've been examining this line. And there's a number of things that I want to look at that I was working on for the last couple of hours. Um, and uh would have been way too tedious for you guys to go through what I was doing. But now that I've done it, we, we can take a look at it and see what it means. So uh first, we know that we have this 235 years. So this is going to be from the time that the prophecy of Josiah is given. Right? So we have the prophecy of Josiah. It's going to be given on November 22nd, 977 BC. Now, November 22nd, 977 BC is uh, on the biblical calendar. It's the 15th day of the eighth month. And that becomes a symbol of... um well, the midnight cry, right? So it becomes a symbol connected to Millerite history. And, and this has aspects of the midnight cry, or altar, altar, the doublings and things like that. Now, it's not on a Thursday. It's actually going to be a Sabbath day, right? So it's a Saturday that this is occurring. Um, so it's not actually what we, we would call Thanksgiving. But we do have times that Thanksgiving is November 22nd in um, uh, the, uh, you know, on, on, on our calendar, right? So, so back in 2018, we had made this prediction regarding November 22nd, 2018. Now, of course, that was, that was Thanksgiving. And, um, and when we had done this prediction the day before, we had a study um, and in trying to narrow this down in that study. So we had had the, the structure already, but we had a group study there in Arkansas. And, um, we said that, well, Trump's hand would be restrained and then it would be loosed. Now, his hand was restrained in that history. That is, it was restrained, um, uh, because of the ninth court circuit talking about uh, limitations on what Trump could do at the border with regard to the military and so forth. Even though on November 22nd, he had urged the military uh, to do things at the border. Now, even though his hand was technically restrained, there was activities that happened on the 15th day and the eighth month on the biblical calendar, uh, which was the Sunday at that border in Mexico. Now, we didn't foresee any of this. That is, when we, we made our prediction, so to speak, what we, um, all we had is that Trump's hand would be loosed and it would be restrained. And we were thinking about it in relationship to um, something to do maybe with Russia or whatever. You know, there was not a clear understanding of what this would mean. So, um so after the fact, it was uh, variously interpreted as to what actually happened. So some people said, well, your prediction failed. You know, it's a false prediction. 
and um, you know you're just trying to make false predictions. Um, now a year later we examined it on November 10th, 2019. So this was in 2018. So in 2019, and we did three studies which were recorded, never released. I was not even allowed to have a copy of it. Um, and in the third study, Jeff went through what I had presented in the first two studies and showed why it was correct. Um, though he had a, a different interpretation about the loosening and restraining, and he felt that this had to do with Islam, and and that it's symbolized by this turkey that is released um, prior to Thanksgiving. So I wasn't really satisfied with his interpretation, but I was happy that he recognized that the structure was valid. I still stuck with my interpretation um, that we could look at an event afterwards and we could see an application, uh, but different people are going to interpret it differently. They're going to see it. It's not going to necessarily be proof of anything. Right? If you could predict an event in advance and you got it nailed down and, and then it was fulfilled, then that might convince some people. But after a fact, you know, it, it becomes a little bit more subjective. That's what I found. So it was, wasn't was even very clear cut. So if we, we have dates in the future and we wait until those dates are fulfilled and then we look at the events and try to decide what events fulfill those dates, there's a lot of subjectivity. But if we have a structural line that that is clearly established upon the past, we then can understand more significantly uh, what those events mean. Now, we don't always necessarily understand them right after the event. Sometimes they take time. Um, but the main point is we can't predict events in the future. We can't pick out a date and say, on this date, this is going to happen. Because we've been clearly shown that that is not something we are to do. But we are to measure the time. We are to go through and establish these chronological keys to unlock prophecy. Um, and we can see that with the 2300 days. It's not really understood until after the 2300 days, the 1335, not understood until after. And even then it took time, right? So, so we believe the same thing about July 18th, um, that we have an event that occurred uh, or a date that occurred what the event was that we predicted didn't happen, but it still was a prophetic symbol. <laughs> so what I want to look at here first is I want to address uh, this connection between what happens on November 22nd, 977 BC, on the 15th day of the eighth month, um, with the prophecy of Josiah and how that relates to um, Trump. So in this chart, you'll see I have 235 years from 977 BC to 742 BC. So 742 BC is going to be the civil war that's going to begin the prophetic mirror. And then I'm also going to have um, 235 months. Now, that may not literally be the case. But if you go from 742 to 723, it's 19 years. And 19 years is a metonic cycle. And a metonic cycle is 235 months. So we can see the 235 years relate to the 19 years. Okay. So I think that that should be evident that, that there's something about that connection between this civil war and the civil war that's going to begin this 65-year prophecy. Now, there's probably more dates I could have put in there. I probably could have put 677 and so forth. But but in this one, I was more focused upon um, the civil wars and then the symbol of this, this um, counterfeit uh, feast day. So when we get to this... Um, Civil War ending. So I have the Civil War ending in 739 BC. And that's just generally what's understood. That's going to be when Assyria is going to conquer Syria and northern Israel. And we know before northern Israel is actually 
destroyed is going to be 21 years later in, well, after 742 BC. And Samaria is destroyed. But in 723 BC, Hoshea is going to be taken captive. So that's where the 19 years come into play. But the civil war ends. And what I did is I counted 25, 20 years uh, to 1782, November 28, 1782. Now, back when I had done this chart, this is in November of 2018. I, I really hadn't attached 1782 with the symbols of July 18, 2020, even though we already technically have that date. Um, I wasn't really looking for those types of symbols. But we do have that symbol. 1782 is just an inver uh, another iteration of 1872, uh, um, right? So the 18th of July. So this is, is mixed up. And we know with Ellen White's uh, birthday, um, uh, she's going to be born in 1827, uh, uh, right? So it's another iteration of those numbers. So anyway, we have this 25, 20 years, and that's going to attach us to um, this Thanksgiving. So this is going to be a Thanksgiving in 1782. It's going to be uh, the last Thursday of November, and this is going to be the first one that is made by the federal government in the United States. Now, it's um, still going to be the con uh Congressional con what's it called? The um, it's it's not like Continental you know, Congress. Continental Congress, yes. The Continental Congress uh that's going to make that uh Thanksgiving, proclaim that one. And then we're gonna have one that's gonna be seven years later. That's November twenty sixth, seventeen eighty nine. That is George Washington. It's proclaimed on October third. And, and that's going to be paired with um, uh, Lincoln's uh, Thanksgiving, the first Thanksgiving uh, that is going to then be the, the pattern for it always continuing to be the last Thursday in November. And, and that's also October 3rd that he proclaims it, and it occurs on November 26th, 1863. So, so those two Thanksgivings are connected, George Washington and Abraham Lincoln. Um, now they're not put exactly here into the lines other than the 154 years. So like as far as spans, I didn't connect them with anything, but you can see November 26, 1863, Trump is going to have his first Thanksgiving on November 23rd. Uh, 2017. Okay, and that's going to be 154 years after Lincoln has his. So we're, we have this civil war, Thanksgiving, and with Trump becoming president, we have this civil war in the United States. Okay, and we can note the 235 years there between the first federal Thanksgiving and the one that Trump is a part of. Okay, so I hope that's clear. So in 2017, Trump, his first Thanksgiving as president, it's 154 years after Lincoln's Thanksgiving. Um, now, back then, and, th and that's what we want to look at, because we do have... Uh, dates coming up, right, that aren't on this line that we may have been able to connect to, to you know, to this line, but we, we haven't done that. So we're not going to do that yet. But anyway, this 235 years is the main thing I want to look at right now. Now, a period of 235 years um, is... If it's just solar years, um, you know, it's 365 times uh, 35. 
So it's going to be um, 85,833 days. Could be 85,834 days, you know, because it's 85,833.75 days if we just multiply by the Julian 365 and a quarter. Obviously, if we use 365.242189, we're going to get a different number. Going to get um, almost. Um, it's going to be eight fifty eight point um, eight three two days, right? So, I'm not eighty five thousand eight hundred and thirty two days. Pardon me. So you got you know variously ways that we could look at this. Now, if we use a biblical year, um, depending on the year. Because with biblical years, it's the lunar solar calendar. So it's 85,800 and sometimes 45 days. So you're going to have different numbers uh, depending on how that those biblical years line up. It could be sometimes a bit less, sometimes a bit more. Um, sometimes you can have it like a whole month different, uh, just depending on where that month begins. But... Um, so to do something that's actually a little bit obscure, uh, what I wanted to do is I wanted to look at these periods of 235 years. Now, with the one in American history from that first Thanksgiving to the first Thanksgiving of Trump, um, that 235 years, it's going to be a period of um, 85,000 827 days. And, and one of the reasons is, is it's, it's less than 235 years in that one's on November 28th and the other one's on November 23rd. Okay. So 85,827 days. Um, if I look at uh, the biblical calendar, and I'm going to go back, and this time I'm going to use the biblical calendar uh, for um, the period of time from uh, 977, so November 22nd, 977. And I'm going to go to the biblical date in 742. Now, you can see there I have the first day of the first month marked in 742 B.C., uh, because that's going to mark the first year of Ahaz. But I'm just going to say, well, what if, you know, we just count 235 years from the 15th day of the eighth month to the 15th day of the eighth month, and we get 85,845, right? So in that span of 235 biblical years, it's going to be 85,845. So, I want to look at something. Now, this is going to be a bit odd, so you, you're going to have to be a little bit patient. Now, this is a file. Let me see, did I share that properly? Let's try that again. So this is a file that um, Aran sent me. Okay, so this file is... Um, what we have done is we've taken the Hebrew numbers and we have uh, counted up the Hebrew numbers in each of these uh, each of these verses. So what you're looking at here is you're looking at um, it's, it's really hard to tell. We've got to figure some other way to do this. Well, that's a little bigger. Okay. It's too big. <laughs> Let's see that a bit. Okay. So I'll show you how this works. So what you're looking at is this is Second Kings chapter uh, 20, 22, verse 20. So this is the verse. 
And, and this number here, that's got S, this is the total of all the Strong's numbers for the Hebrew words. So it's the, you know, so if we had the Hebrew numbers in there and we added them up, we're going to get 85,845. Now remember that this is, um, the number of days in 235 years. If we counted from the same date in um, 977 to the same date in 742. So we could have counted, you know, from the first day of the first month in uh, 977 to the first day of the first month in 742. It doesn't really matter which date you take as long as it's the same date. So that's a period of 235 years. It's 85,845 days. Now, this verse in 2 Kings chapter 22, verse 20, is a verse that relates to Josiah, right? So we know that this is about the prophecy of Josiah, and, and this relates to Josiah. It says, Behold, therefore, I will gather thee unto thy fathers, and thou shalt be gathered into thy grave in peace, and thine eyes shall not see all the evil which I will bring upon this place. And they brought the king word again. So what is this verse about? How would we relate this to the prophecy of Josiah? Anybody really following what I'm doing? So I'm taking the the Hebrew numbers of this total verse. So it's all added up. And that's the same number of days in 235 years. And it's about Josiah. Right. So it's about Josiah, the death of Josiah. Now, is Josiah going to be gathered under to his grave in peace? First question. Maybe it's the second question. Doesn't he go out to fight against Egypt? Right. So he disobeys God and, and this doesn't happen to him. Right. So, so God is telling him. You know, you're you're just going to die in peace. And you're not going to see all the evil that's going to happen. Of course, he doesn't see all the evil that happens, but he doesn't die in peace because he disobeys God and goes out to fight against uh, the king of Egypt. And a straight arrow gets into his armor and he bleeds out and dies in the chariot. Right. So. um so that doesn't happen. So somebody could say, well, this is a false prophecy. It never happened that way. But it is a conditional prophecy, right? Correct. Yeah. Because once he disobeys God, then that is going to be, uh, you know, changed. Okay. So, so the Bible doesn't, you know, change the story to fit what, you know, happened. It doesn't change the prophecy. It just, it, it understands it. You know, the Bible is a conditional prophecy. Right? Okay. So it's rather interesting if we take this 235 years and, and we connect it to the Civil War. Now, the other number that I was looking at was um, 350 years. So when we go to the prophecy of Josiah in... Um, First uh, Kings chapter 13, um, we're going to have, um, let me see here. Uh, I have to find the verse. I think it was verse three. This is kind of tedious to do here, but, um, Okay, so what we're going to have is we're going to have uh, this sign. We're going to have the prophecy of Josiah. So I'm just going to try to find this here. Uh, this is just one way I can get to the right verse. Um, it's a little, little bit tedious to do this. Okay, 
So, so this is this is going to be uh, the verses here. So this is um, just looking at these. So this is going to be no, nope, that's not the verse I want. Where's the verse I want? Okay, okay. So this is the the verse. This is chapter thirteen. In chapter 13, we're going to have um, all of these uh, verses, right? It's going to show you the numbers here. Okay. And I was looking at these different numbers, trying to figure them out. Uh, the one where it talks about, um, you know, it says, uh, let me see. It talks about Josiah. So there's this one here where it talks about Josiah. And I looked at these different numbers. I tried to say, well, how long a period of time is this? It's like 284 years and something, 260 days. So, um, but uh, the main thing here is we have this prophecy of Josiah. And we know that it's going to be fulfilled 350 years later. So then I said, well, if I'm going to look at the curse, that's connected to 200 or 350 years. Um, I have this chart, so I'll just show you what I'm doing here. So these are all of the verses in the Bible, what all the Hebrew numbers add up to. So you can see here I have, um, like when it came to the 235, you can see I have... Um, this 85845, that's one of the verses, right? So that's going to be 2 Kings 20 verse, uh, or chapter 22, verse 20. And, and you can see it's just slightly more than these are solar years, 235.031 solar years. So it's going to be a little bit longer. You can also see I have, um, the 25828, that's the number of days in the 235 years between those two Thanksgivings. Now, the, the, the only number that I have that's the closest to, um, 235 solar years is 85830. So I should actually look at this one before I look at the other one. So I looked up that number and so 28530. So five, I don't know. Um, 85320, pardon me. Um, what did I do wrong? 85830, that's what it is. 85830. Oh, yeah. Now, this is a verse that relates to Hezekiah. Behold, I will bring again the shadow of the degrees, which has gone down in the sundial of Ahaz, 10 degrees backward. So the sun returned 10 degrees by which degrees it was gone down. Now, so I had looked at this. So this is just another symbol of 235 years. And what's the verse about? Does this have any relationship to what we're doing? There's an extension of time there by 15 years, if I remember correctly. Right. So it has to do, he's going to live for 15 more years. And the sign that he asks is, do you want the sundial to go back 10 degrees or go forward 10 degrees? And he said, well, it's easy for the sun to return 10 degrees or, or to go back or forward 10 degrees. But to return 10 degrees backwards, that's unusual, Right. So that's what he asked for as a sign, and that's what's going to happen. So now nobody really knows what these 10 degrees mean, right? Um, and why 10 degrees for 15 years? So there might be some kind of relationship between uh, the span of time that's represented by these 10 degrees and the 15 years that is added uh, to the life of Ahaz, but I don't know what it is. But anyway, I just wanted to show you that. So if we took um, that 235 years and we find the closest representation of a verse to a solar year, 
it would be uh, this verse. So it's it's an interesting verse, one I've always been interested in. I'm not sure how it relates to the prophecy of Josiah. Now, when it comes to, so I'm showing you that because I wanted to show you this. So now when I go to this chart and I'm going to go to um, 350 years. So you can see this column here is the solar years. So I'm going to go 350 solar years. I have to zoom up here and just move up. So you can see there's 290, so way past 350. Okay, so the closest number that we have here to 350 years is um, this number here. It's going to be uh, 127750. It's going to be um, 349.76 years. Um, so it's going to be less than 350 years. I guess we might say this one's closer, 27850. That's 350 years, but it's more than 350 years. And um, so anyway, I looked up this number, 127750, in this uh, 127750. Okay, now this is interesting because this verse, it says, the king stood by a pillar and made a covenant before the Lord to walk after the Lord and to keep his commandments and his testimonies and statutes with all their heart and all their soul to perform the words of the covenant that were written in this book and all the people stood to the covenant. So what verse is this? It is uh, chapter 23 of Second Kings. And it's verse three. So who is this talking about? Anybody know? So this is talking about Josiah. This is a chapter on Josiah's reforms. It's this chapter that we refer to when we talk about the fulfillment of the prophecy of Josiah. Right. That's going to be when we get to verse 15. That's where it's going to say. And moreover, the altar that was at Bethel in the high place, which Jeroboam, the son of Nebat who made Israel to sin had made, both that altar and the high place he break down. So is it significant that we can come to this verse for the fulfillment of the 350 years? And i got to share the screen so you can see it. I'm sorry about that. So this is the verse, right? It's... This verse represents 350 years as a number. Is that significant? Now, if we take the other number that's close to 350 years, it brings us to a text regarding Saul and Samuel when Saul became king. And that's going to be in uh, first. I'm not sure what this is. This is chapter. 9 verse 1, so that must be uh, Samuel chapter 9, First Samuel chapter 9 verse 1. Uh, but anyway, so when we get back to this other verse, can we say that this is significant? Or, you know, am I just grabbing for straws here? That we have we have two different two different verses that one relates to 235 years, and it brings us to uh, a prophecy about the death of Josiah, and the other one represents 350 years, and it brings us to the reforms of Josiah, to the chapter where it's going to talk about the reforms of Josiah 353 350 years later. Is this a valid analysis? Anybody have any opinion about this? Now, notice that this is going to be about this covenant, right? The book of the covenant, okay? And, and Josiah is going to make a covenant before the Lord. We also have, so we had the 10 degrees. There was one other one. Okay. So the other one, which is the one from the 235 years between those Thanksgivings, uh, 
the first Thanksgiving and Trump's Thanksgiving. It brings us to this text. So this text, although my house be not so with God, yet he hath made with me an everlasting covenant ordered in all things. And sure, for this is all my salvation and all my desire, although he make it not grow. So we have here a covenant, an everlasting covenant that's made. And we have this 235 years between these things, two Thanksgivings, and we have a verse, one verse in the Bible, where all the Hebrew numbers add up to 85,820. So we have two verses uh, that relate to covenants. Right. We have one dealing with another verse that deals with um, a king being made king, the first king of Israel. We have this. We have one uh, that relates to, uh, well, two that relate to Josiah, either the 235 and the 350 years. So is there any significance in any of this? Or is this just random? I don't see this as being random. Okay. Yeah, I, I would take it hard to be random, but the question is, what does it mean? Right, so we have covenants mentioned, we have kings mentioned. So when I looked at all these different spans that relate to these periods of time, it ties us to Josiah in two of them, and one to the chapter in which he which we've used, chapter 23, uh, where it talks about the fulfillment of the prophecy of Josiah. And um, the other one talking about uh, the death of Josiah. Another one addressing uh, the 15 years that are added to the life of Hezekiah. And another one dealing with um uh, Saul being the first king, they all seem to be connected in some way, correct? They're connected to these kings. So we got them connected to Saul. Now this one here, where we have this uh, verse, um, now who is this talking about with this covenant? Isn't it talking about Christ? Okay, um, so this is Second Samuel 23, verse 6. These are the last words of David, is the, the title of the section. Okay, so we have um, these representations bring us to Saul, right, when he becomes king, to the last words of David. Uh, to Josiah when he's told that he's going to die in peace. Right. And then we have also, you know, the connections to, um, the prophecy of Josiah. So we have these kings. Each one of them is relating to some king and also to these covenants. So. So this 235 years must relate in some ways to these covenants. And we also have the, you know, dealing with Hezekiah too, him getting 15 years extended to his life. And in connection with time prophecy, I, I would think that they're all related. Exactly how I would put those together in, in what we're studying here. Um, that would take a little bit of time to sort of think it through. So if we take that 235, so remember the number 235 is the number of, it comes from the metonic cycle, right? Right, 19 right. years. Okay. Yes. So we know that if we take uh, 19 years, uh, do this the right way. There we go. Okay. So if we take this 19 years in a metonic cycle, I don't know if this is the best way to do it. But in 19 years, you're going to have seven regular years 
and seven embolismic years. That is, you're going to have seven years that are going to be um, uh, that are going to have 12 months, right? Or pardon me, uh, you're going to have you're going to have in 19 years, you're going to have 12 years that have 12 months, right? Oops. So I just go 12 times 12. So you're going to have 144 months that are regular years. Correct. 12 months. They're going to either have 253, 254, or 255 days. But they're all going to have 12 months. And then you're going to have seven years that have 13 months, right? So you're going to have 91 uh, uh Um, and so that's 91 months. So of those, so if you add them together, um, plus 144, right, you get that 235 months in in a metonic cycle. Okay. Does that make sense to people? It's now we know that if we take seven times 12, so there, that is, a metonic cycle with the 19 years represents the covenant. Seven times 12 is 84. 84 months is 2520, right? That makes sense? And, and we, have, we have this representation on the 1843 chart. Seven times 12 is 84. That's seven years of of 30 day months, but of course we know it's not quite how it works, but because it's actually going to be, uh, if we use months on our calendar, it'd be like 31, uh, or pardon me, what it's 30, no, we do 31. Anyway, the midst of the week, we get the 2,604, um, days from in the week of Christ. So can we say that this 235 anyway is representing the covenant? That's that's the question. Is it representing the week of Christ? Is this Mictonic cycle a symbol that God has placed in nature? I think it'll be interesting for us to validate this. Yeah, so I mean we've seen these symbols. I mean, I dealt with the Metonic cycle and the Molad um cycle. Right. All these different structures um, that are um, definitely impossible to have occurred by chance. Right. So one of the things we know is, um, you know, the Hebrews divide the day into this many parts. Right. And that's the number of years that you would have with the procession of the equinoxes. And, and the reason why they divide this this way, at least in the common understanding, is because they're trying to figure out the length, the average length of a month without using fractions and decimals because they didn't have uh, de- a decimal system in that way. They just divided things into whole parts. And so they know that uh, 2,592... Um, Months times uh, 29.530. Make a different length of month is 765432 plus one days, right? So this is how long uh, 25,920 months is. And so if it's, if it's this many days and you have, then you can just create the parts of a day to be 25,920 so that you know that this is how long, how many parts there are in a month. 765432 plus one, that's just slightly less than one. That's how many parts there are in um, a, a month, right? Now, if I just multiply, so a part, a Hebrew part is 3.3, Three, 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 three seconds, right? If I multiply this, it would then equal, uh, what did I do wrong? 
Okay. Um, that would be the number of seconds. So then I have to divide this by 60 divided by 60. Can't remember. I did my math wrong somehow there. So seven, six, five, four, three, two, plus one. So that's the num that's how long a month is. And that's times point um whoops times seven six five four three three times three point so these are the number of seconds. I have to do this right. That's how many seconds a month is. Right, so probably I'll just change plus point. One. So there's there's the length of a month. And how many seconds are there in a day? One eight six zero zero, right? Is that correct? Am I doing something wrong, Iran? Six three zero. So if that's the number of seconds in a month, divide it by sixty, and that would give me the number of minutes in a month. And and I'd divide it by 60 again, and that would give me the number of hours. That's not right. So what did I do wrong, Iran? You know? What's that? Well, I was just going to say the number of seconds per day should be 86,400. Okay, so 86,400. There's what it is. Okay. Ah, there we go. So now I took the number of parts. There we go. So this is the length of the Hebrew month back in 500 BC, 29,000, uh, 29.530594, uh, days, right? So I know that was probably tedious for people to go through. But the point is we have structures that exist within nature that are unexplainable. Why would the procession of the equinoxes be related to the length of the month? There's no physical uh, connection between the procession of the earth on its axis, you know, where the North Pole is going to be pointing to takes this, this number of time and it's related to the length of the month. So, doesn't really make much sense from a, an evolutionary point of view. It's, it's something that shows design. So now we're dealing with this um, degrees. So I just wanted to address this degrees. Now, when it says degrees, it says in the Hebrew, it just says steps, right? So when we deal with this sundial, so I'm going to go over here. So we're going to deal with a sundial, sundial of Ahaz. Okay, now this is in Isaiah 38. Now, why is this in the story of Isaiah and not in some other place? Isaiah 38. When we deal with the book of Isaiah, it's going to address this history, because Isaiah is a prophet in this time. He's going to deal with Ahaz, right, the prophecy to Ahaz in chapter 7. So he's going to deal with this history of Hezekiah. So Hezekiah is going to be sick. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came unto him and said, Thus saith the Lord, set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Then Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall and prayed unto the Lord and said, Remember now, O Lord, I beseech thee. I have walked before thee in truth and with perfect heart and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. Then came the word of the Lord to Isaiah, saying, Go and say to Hezekiah, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will add to thy days fifteen years, and I will deliver thee and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria, and will defend this city. And this shall be a sign unto thee from the Lord, that the Lord will do this thing that he has spoken. Behold, I will again bring the shadow of the degrees which has gone down in the sundial of Ahaz, 10 degree backward. 
So the sun returned 10 degrees, by which degrees it was gone down. Okay? So, so this, so he's going to add this to him. Now, um, so I'm just going to look here. Now, if we, so in this story here in the book of Isaiah, it doesn't have as much detail as it has here in Second Kings. So here we're going to have the same story. But he's going to say, um, what shall the sign that the Lord will heal me and that I shall go up into the house of the Lord on the third day? And Isaiah said, the sign shall that shalt thou have of the Lord, that the Lord will do the thing that he has spoken. Shall the shadow go forward 10 degrees or go back 10 degrees? So here it doesn't mention the sundial as a name, but it mentions the shadow going forward 10 degrees. So, or back 10 degrees. So Hezekiah says, let the return back 10 degrees. Okay, so we have in the story of Isaiah chapter 38, we have this, and it is going to bring us to um, this verse. So the verse that we have that deals with these 10 degrees. Yeah, so this is verse 8. So it's so verse 8 is the one, what shall be the sign that the Lord will heal me, that I shall go up into the house of the Lord the third day? That's going to be, if you add up the Hebrew numbers, it'll be 85,830. That's the verse that it brings us to. Now, also, it has uh, the third day. Now, what does the third day symbolize here? Would that be resurrection? Okay, so we know that it's connected to the resurrection of Christ. So that I shall go up into the house of the Lord the third day, right? We know that that, that, that symbol shows up with the resurrection of Christ. And it's also connected to a sign. Right, the sign of the son of, of Jonah, right, the three days and three nights, which is the third day. Now, we also know that it relates to Ezra 7 to 10. Okay, so we have all of these connections here. Right, we have now 15 years. Um, so if you're going to add 15 years, can you use a day for a year? To say 15 days. You understand what I'm getting at here? Because <clears throat> we have a natural lunar cycle, lunar solar cycle of 391 years and 15 days, right? So maybe the 15 days relates to that as a prophecy. But what about the 10 degrees? Like nobody knows how long of time that is. Now, if it's, it's degrees, 10 degrees, that's one thing. 36th of a day, right? So 10 degrees is how much time? Anybody know how to figure that out? So you take uh, 24 and you divide it by 36. How long is that? That would be uh, two-thirds of an hour, 0.666. Right. So yeah, point six 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 six, etc. Yeah. So two thirds of an hour is how long? Forty minutes, right? Correct. Okay. So forty minutes, um, relating to fifteen years. So is there any relationship between the forty minutes and the fifteen years as a symbol? So a simple way to look at it is if you multiply this 0. 0.6666 times 15, you get 10. So would that would that be 2,400 seconds? Uh, 2,400 seconds. The yeah. So that's um, 40 times uh, 60. 2,400 seconds. But if we take 10 degrees, so you're taking, you know, 360 degrees in a day, right, that the sun moves and it's going to move 10 degrees. If you're saying that that's 136 of a day, which is 40 minutes, it's going to go back 40 minutes in time. 
and it's going to relate to 15 years. Right. So if we multiply, so I'll just show you here what I'm doing and just see if this makes any sense. Okay. So I'm going to say we have, um, we're going to take 24 hours and divide it by 36. That is, um, 36 is, is 10 degrees of a 24 hour period. Right. And that gives us this many hours, right? Now that many hours is 40 minutes, right? But if I say he's going to add to his life 15 years, so I multiply this by 15, it's going to give me the number 10, the number of degrees that I started with. So can we see that 10 degrees represents 15 years? Is just a simple question. Does that make sense to people? Why there's 10 degrees that it goes back because it represents the 15 years. So the question is, is this prophetically going back 15 years? Well, yeah. Well, he's getting 15 years extended. Okay. Right? So that means he, he gets 15 years added on that he wouldn't have had. And, and to show that that as a symbol... He's asked about 10 degrees. Do you want to go forward 10 degrees or back 10 degrees? Well, he says, you know, going forward 10 degrees, the shadow always goes forward 10 degrees eventually. But if it goes back 10 degrees, that's really something. Okay. So, um, so we can see then that this 10 degrees represents the 15 years. Okay. Now that's 40 minutes. Okay. So, so that 10 degrees is representing 40 minutes. So then we have, if we're going to take how many the degrees of a whole day represents, right? So 10 degrees is 136th of a day. And we want to know how long would we multiply the 40 times 36 to get this number? Or is that not making sense? Because that's the number of minutes in, in a day, right? So the number of minutes in a day is 1,440. So that's simply, we're just saying that a day represents 1,440 minutes. Because we just we just change degrees into minutes, right? We're saying the degrees are minutes. So we already know this about a day. It's this many minutes. So if that's the case, how many years are there in a day? Does that make sense, what I'm asking? 360, isn't it? Okay, but... But when we're yeah, so so when we're looking at this, what I'm just trying to say is there's 10 degrees. 10 degrees is going to represent 40 minutes. And we could just say, well, 10 degrees represents three, a day represents 360. Okay, that's what you're saying. Okay. Right. So so in 360, right, that's the number of of that's what a day represents. Now, if you're going to take um, 40 or, or 10 of those degrees, 10 of those degrees. The question is, how many years are there in 360? Right? Because he's going to have 15, he's going to have 15, um, uh, years represented by 10 degrees. Right? So if I multiplied 15 years times 36, I get 540. I don't know if that I'm doing that right, if that makes sense. But this, this, that means the whole day, right, which is 
360 degrees in a day, if I'm going to take that 10 and turn it into uh, years, it's 540. So that's the relationship between the days and the years. So 10 degrees represents 15 years. So 360 degrees represents 540 years. So that makes sense. There's just different ways of looking at these numbers. I know this is extremely analytical. <laughs> yeah, it is. Okay. But all I'm saying is if we're looking at this, we're saying 10 degrees is going to represent 15 years. That means 360 degrees would represent 540 years. Okay. So, so it's just simply understanding the relationship between these 360 degrees that occur in a day. There's, because that's, that if, if this 10 degrees represents 40 minutes. So, so maybe this is some kind of, uh, like 235, for instance, divided by 540. Just going to use that. That'd be 156.6 days <clears throat> or hours or minutes or whatever. So I don't know. It's just me being very analytical about what this 10 degrees might mean. I mean, obviously it's, it's 15 years and we could use a day for a year. We could say it relates to the prophecy of Josiah, right? Okay. Now, so we have um, so we have 540 represented. So maybe 540 re represents something here in these lines that we don't recognize, because that 15 years is part of something, right? It's part of 360. So it, it's all I'm saying is we have. So what we have. Just analyzing 977 BC and the 235. We have related to the that um, the prophecy of Josiah is going to connect us in 350 years to the fulfillment 350 years later. The 235 years is going to connect us to these covenants. It's going to connect us to the sundial of Hezekiah. It's going to connect us to Saul being made king. It's going to connect us to Josiah um, being told that he's going to die in peace. And here it's Hezekiah. It's connected to Hezekiah getting an extra 15 years of life. And it's connected to 10 degrees on a sundial. So if we're going to relate it to these prophecies that we have, can we relate it to this structure here? Because we do have this 235 years here, right? That's going to connect us to Trump. And, and I know there's something that we're missing. That's why I'm spending so much time analyzing this. Because one is I want to show people the process that, um, that we're using the scriptures. Now, some people may say, well, you're doing this kind of, you know, cryptically or magically or something because you're, you're using Strong's numbers. But it's already connecting us to stuff that we know, right? We already know about the prophecy of Josiah. We already know when it's fulfilled. Okay. Okay, let's look at it this way. So I'm going to just do a bit more math here. I think I've figured something out. Okay, so if we take 540, there's 15 years that are taken out of that 540 years, right? So we're saying that the 360 degrees on the sundial represents 540 years, right? That's just simply 15 times 36 is 540. So if I take out, I subtract what do I have to subtract here? I'm going to subtract 15 years, correct? 
So what do what I do? Is. What's that? So I'm following what you're doing. Okay, you're following. So I've just take I've taken that that 10 degrees is out of 360. So that is 10 over 360 equals 15 over 540, right? Okay, continue. Uh, did it backwards. 15 divided by 5. Uh, so what did I do wrong? 10 over 360 equals 300. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. 10 divided by 360. Yeah, so those things are equal, right? They equal this amount. So that amount um, is uh, 15 years, right? 10 degrees, okay. So if I take 540 and I remove the 15 years, I get 525, whoops. 540 minus 15, right? I get 525. Is that significant? That's another one of those numbers that, that we were addressing when we okay. were going through this with Lamech. Yes. Yeah. Now, I get 350. So here's the other thing. If I have 360 and I remove 10 degrees, what do I get? 350. Is 350 related to the prophecy of Josiah? Yes. That's the number of years for when the prophecy of Josiah is given to when it's fulfilled. Right? But we can use the same symbol, the same measure, by taking it as years and subtracting the 15 years out, we get 525. Is there any relationship between the prophecy of Josiah and 525 as a symbol? The prophecy of Josiah gives us July 18th. How many days from July 18th to December 25th, 2021. 525 days, correct? Agreed. Okay. So, so we have this. So I think we, we, we figured it out what this means to us. Okay. So this isn't ultimately what it means, but to us understanding these, these verses that we connected. Using symbols of 235 years and 350 years, it connected us to verses. And each of those verses relates to what we already understand about the prophecy of Josiah in November 22nd, 977 BC. Now, I know watching me work through this is probably pretty tedious. It'd be much nicer watching a completed presentation where we bring all this together. It'd be way more interesting. But you can see we found something, that the 350 years and the 235 years are related to the 525, and that relates directly to our history. So, so can we accept that what we did here today is valid, even if it's rather confusing? So what I'm, what I'm going to do tomorrow is I'm going to put this together in a bit clearer way, uh, take the verses, take the numbers, uh, put them together. I'm going to try to get that done today. I have a pretty busy day planned out. Um, but if not today, tomorrow morning before the study, I'll try to get this drawn out. Um, but what we can say then is that all these spans of 235 years here and here connect us to these verses. And we have a 252 years here between, you now that's one thing we're going to have to look at when we start looking more at American history, because I wanted to, to do that today. But the reason I didn't is because I ended up doing this other thing. But we're going to still get to that. We're going to look at these dates. So one of the things I want to look at is um, uh, the, the, the Great Seal, some of the dates that relate to that and these structures. Also, why the repeal of the Stamp Act, why I'm marking that the 252 years. This could seem like just an arbitrary date that's just meant to fit. Um, 
but the significance of the repeal of the Stamp Act. Anybody know what the Stamp Act is? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And is it significant? It's almost as, ex as significant as the Boston Tea Party, right? Correct. Yeah. But, you know, the Boston Tea Party is a little more dramatic, makes for better, uh, you know, uh, TV and stuff like that. The repeal of the Stab Act isn't that exciting, but it just has to do with the attacks on paper, right? So paper is taxed. Um, so anyway, that, that is in there for 252 years. And the question is, how does that relate to November 22nd, 2018? <clears throat> But also, we know that there are things that we we have to um, – there may be more that can be added to this, especially as we start looking ahead. Because 2018 was a while ago, and so if you were going to add uh, – there may be other dates in there that are going to be significant. Um so I think the 235, I think we can agree, and the 350. So I'm going to get the chart with that in there and the verses. We can look at that a little more closely. But definitely in, in the story of Hezekiah, it's representing the 350 years. Now, you know, we could talk about Hezekiah's 15 years. You know, he's going to get those 15 years added. Uh, but if you take it out of the 360, that leaves you the 350. Right, right, because it's 10 degrees. So um, any other questions before we close with prayer? Any other thoughts? Because we've got a little bit of time here. You know, there's probably lots of analysis of this that I haven't really done yet. Because there's, there's things I wouldn't have understood when I was looking at this back in 2018. I just wouldn't have understood. One of the things here I have to consider. Okay. okay. Well, let's close with prayer. <clears throat> Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we are thankful again for the study here. I know that uh, many things here are hard to be understood, but we ask that uh, you can help us as we go through these studies, that we can present them simply and plainly, and that other people can understand them. And we ask for your angels' care and protection throughout this day. We ask for your blessing upon all that we do and um, help each of us in our plans that they may glorify you. And we pray this and ask it in Jesus' name.